Hey guys, welcome to Andy's Arcade, and yes, this is part number one of the Gauntlet Arcade Cabinet build. Yes, a dedicated cabinet, guys. By Atari, this is going to be a reproduction of the classic four-player arcade game. Oh, for two years I've been thinking about this. In fact, I've probably been thinking about this since 1986. I know the game came out in 85, but 86 was the first time I saw the game in um, a service station, coming back from a school trip. My mate, he stuck the money in. Oh, I didn't have no money, so I had to watch. And boy, as soon as he... Welcome... And then he collected that treasure chest and it said treasure 100 points. I was blown away with the speech straight away. I just loved the game from that moment. I didn't take much notice of the cabinet, to be honest. But the game blew me away. So guys, you know, two years now I've been thinking about this. And the last couple of months I've been doing some research. And I thought, you know what, sod it. I've got no room in the garage to put this cabinet in. But I thought, sod it. Let's build it and let's worry about that later. So yeah, we're going to try and build this machine. Um, we're going to try and put the sidecar on. Um, we're going to try and, you know, put the original hardware in if we can. Um, I might build two control panels. Um, one for just standard joysticks like, like these here. Um, and then um, build a second control panel for the original Atari joysticks. Now they're roughly around hundred dollars each um, so I haven't got four hundred dollars just to spend and, and then I got to ship them over to the UK so it's gonna cost me big money so I might just have to pick up one or two here and there whenever I can so for now let's get the cabinet built um, and then we can add I mean the coin mechs and, and the coin doors are gonna cost a lot of money as well and I've got to ship them from the good old United States as well so it's gonna cost Quite a bit of money, but don't tell the wife. She's gonna kill me. But anyway, um, yeah. So we got a lot to do. So I, I was thinking in this video, let's mark out the cabinet. Uh, my my mate, my buddy Phil, he's gonna come round and uh, we're gonna set up. We're gonna cut cut the board, cut the cabinet, um, and get the side panels done today on this video. And um, that that'll probably be uh, part number one, and then. We're, we're going from, I don't know what we're going to do in part number two. Maybe we should do some, you know, router in for the T moulding for the side panels and all that. Because I just can't stand doing that. But it needs to be done. And I, I, I think I'm going to prefer to do that before I build the cabinet. And and then maybe um, start cutting the the front panel where the coin, mix, uh, coin doors are going and, and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll worry about part number two later. But for now, this is part number one. Let's go and set up. Let's get me uh, Inverness top. And let's get going on it. Let's do it, guys. Enough talking. Let's do it. All right, guys. Um, what I'm doing here is just um, measuring a uh, 100mm border around the four sides so um, it's just easier to cut the um, the plan really because I've got two boards on top of each other and I, I want to do it in in one cut as they say um, I don't want to do the first side mark it out cut it and do the second one and cut it um, because you know you're gonna have equal sides if you put two boards on top of each other so that's my understanding, that's what I'm going to do, and I think that's for the best. I got a plan from jackabud.com, he's got a, I found a gauntlet cabinet plans there, and um, he's got a load of other cabinet plans um, on, on his website, so um, go and check it out, uh, thumbs up to him, and um, yeah, that's why I got the plans, and that's the plans I'm going to, um, show right now and um, as you can see that's the measurements I am going to so hopefully it's right I don't know how accurate they are but um, that's what I'm following so that is what I'm gonna do so um, 
what I'll probably do now, guys, is when I'm marking out, I'll probably just fast forward it so I, I can do it really fast, put a little bit of music to it, and um, we're going to the next stage. guys um, I'm not gonna lie to you that was uh, very tricky um, I'm gonna just take the um, camera off and do you guys I was um, quite tricky I'll um, I'll just go over it again and just um, check my measurements and make sure we're absolutely spot on um, I don't know if you can see it guys it's very difficult to to see it but um, yeah it took a while <laughs> but um, it's all marked up so um, it's Thursday night now so my mate Phil he's popping around Saturday morning and he's gonna help me um, cut the uh, shape and hopefully we can do it um, yeah the reason why I I sort of come away from the edge because I couldn't quite get the uh, edge spot on so I don't really make any odds now. I can cut the two boards and they'll all fit nice, I hope. <laughs> That's the plan. So yeah guys, what do you think? There's the first initial draw, so let's get ready and cut it. Right guys, uh, you can see a plan in the top left hand corner, um, so that's our little guideline to see what's uh, happening. Um, you can see three uh, lines, red lines there, um, I drilled a 24mm hole um, for the curve of the cabinet, um, I'll show you guys later. Um, and now you can see a red line uh, on, on the plan and that's, that's, the, that's the cut we are doing now. Uh, so yeah, um, and, and you'll see in a minute um, more of them appearing as, as we, we're going to do the cutting. So yeah, that's the top of the cabinet we're cutting at the moment. Remember guys, we're cutting um, two sheets of MDF, so it's taking a little bit longer than um, normal. Yeah, 
hold it steady. Um, let's hope the new floor works for the same company. That's uh, Andy and Phil's cabinet builders. Arcade cabinet builders. So that's the first cut done. And take that piece away. Now we're doing the second cut, which is the back of the cabinet. Um, these uh, funny angles, so um, we had a little think about it in the film. We decided to do it in this order because um, it's, it's going to be an easy, an easy cut if we did it this way. So this is our second cut. And you can see the yellow mark at the top, that's, that means it's, that's the piece that's already been done. So you'll see more as we cut more. We're going for this angle now. Um, so yeah, we're going to get this tricky angle cut out of the way. But we've done one, as you can see on the plan, where the yellow mark is. But one at the top at the moment, at the top of the cabinet. And, and then the next one is the angle one at the back of the cabinet. Where the PCB and um, all that is uh, stored. So now we're going to do this long run. This is the back of the cabinet now. Um, you can see on the, on the plan. Um, oh, I can't stress enough, you've got to wear a mask and goggles for these guys. Uh, the MDF oh, it's, it's a killer basically, so you don't want to be breathing this in. Um, so, yeah. These mask and goggles, and also ear defenders. You should wear ear defenders, but uh, you know, you didn't have any of that. Another off cut. Yeah, you can see the dust now flying about, and the camera's covered in it. Always cut outside, never cut inside. Now we're doing the uh, bottom of the cabinet, and this is why um, I decided to place two sheets. Um, and, and cut to it at once because um, you can have all equal sides uh, do it this way um, that's why it also steps up uh, four inches all the way around um, so you, you know that everything's going to be cut right and be as exact as you possibly can now we're doing the uh, where the control panel sits Never awkward cut because Bill's got to stop at a certain point. And um, what she needs to do. There you can see uh, we've used um, some feather edge to help us as a guideline. We also use clamps and we also screwed. Uh, some screws into the MDF um, just to make it more steady. The last thing we'll be doing is cutting it and it's just wobbling and, and leaving. Now we're going to do the front of the cabinet where the coin nets are um, located. See now on the plan the yellow marks of what we've done, so not far to go now. A fantastic job, Bill. Another tricky cut because he's got a plunge straight in on this one. This is for the, uh, the monitor days. Thank you. 
the same here. Cut two, cut two different ways. It's just getting to the point where the 24 millimeter hole is. And you can stop the bike there. And you can use the jigsaw to finish off that cut in a minute. This is where the speaker grill speakers go. One more cut after this one, and we're done. So it's going down to the, um, the 24 meter hole I drilled earlier. Um, it's just using a jig now just to uh, finish it off. We can take this big section away, and then you'll see most of the cabinet in. Now for the final cut, it's going to have to do it in two sections, come up and then back again. We're going to the uh, two holes I pre-drilled earlier for the radius. Just basically um, the 24mm hole, uh, it just gives it that curve on the tight angles. So that when, the, when you install a T-mold in, it's not a sharp edge, so it just curves round nicely. That's all it is. So it doesn't have to be um, an amazing um, radius curve. But I'll show you guys uh, when we get back in the garage. There's some of the curves that we did with the jigsaw. Done a fantastic job. Thanks, Phil. Big thumbs up, mate. Yes, guys, we have two side panels. We're back in the garage now, um, and I just want to show you some close ups of the, what Phil has cut for me. Um, he's done a fantastic job. Um, I can't be. I, I, I'm speechless really because um, I'm really pleased with the, the end result. Um, I know it's only two side panels but they're very important <laughs> and um, yeah I, I'm, I'm really happy. So um, let me just tell you um, how I, I've done the curves. Um, I've done one, two and a three. So basically all I did was use this 24 millimeter spade drip well it's not a spade but it's a spade bit um drill bit and um basically just worked it out and drilled the hole like that so it just gave a slight curve on the um corner because it, I, I didn't want a sharp bend the team old and can wrap around nice now so happy days on that one so yeah guys what do you think did we do a good job have we got our measure measurements spot on I don't know I hope so well let me just uh, it's just under six foot and um, if you can see uh, if I just bring it that's um, I'm just under six foot and um, that's the top of the cabinet and uh, that's where the speaker goes and um, monitor so yeah I think it's the right right height um, I put it against the um, the other cabinets over there and to be fair it's only a little bit smaller than those two and um, yeah I, kn I know gauntlet cabinet is quite small so um, it's bulky but not very tall so guys uh, this is um, part number one of the uh, dedicated Atari gauntlet cabinet from 1985 um, so what do you think? Like it? Gonna follow me in this journey? Then you've got to like this video and you've got to subscribe because you wouldn't know when part number two is out here. Right? If you're not subscribed, you don't know when part two is out. So yeah, um, that's it for part number one. So yeah, don't forget guys to um, subscribe to my channel 
um, and also like the video and leave any comments below um, if any of you guys got a, an original uh, gauntlet cabinet um, you know get in contact with me let me see uh, let me see some pictures and um, let's have a little chat and uh, get some more info especially about the speaker grill because I'm not too sure um, how that works with the, the grill itself um, so again you know that's a long way away yet but uh, it's another headache <laughs> um, yeah so thanks guys this num part number one of the Atari dedicated Gauntlet 1985 cabinet and I'll catch you guys in the next video maybe it'll be part two I don't know <laughs> but I'll see you then so take care and thanks for watching